so Derry is the main man in the kitchen for our Tully Nally visit, where he will be ably assisted in his role by Paul Flynn. Once Paul has fulfilled his primary chores as the gatherer and, well, gathered the key ingredients for the feast. That leaves Catherine to join the Pakenhams and friends at the table to enjoy Derry and Paul's efforts and to dig up a story or two about the family and their wonderful home. Well, listen, guys, uh, let's get cooking, will we? Uh, no, not me. I'm going fishing. See you later. He's going fishing. He is? He is. Me. Sorry, Derry. I gotta meet a man about a tree. You're on your own? Well, fair enough, so. Cook on my own. Ah, uh, Derry, did you think we'd leave you on your own? Joining Derry in the kitchen is Laura Allen, who works with Derry on a daily basis back in Dublin, and who drew the short straw. Before Paul arrives with the fruits of his labours, there's an amount of work to be done, not least in coming to terms with Tully Nally's long-serving stove. My favourite. I don't believe this. <laughs> huh? This is it? The mighty Aga is the cooker of choice in five of the six houses we visit in the course of this series. And as mighty as they undoubtedly are, they're not necessarily the cooker of choice in the top restaurants of the country. Lucky the food is still cooked. But we're in the kitchen of Tully Nally Castle, not Le Crivan. So embrace the Aga, Derry. Embrace the Aga. Disaster. Before. Disaster. One of the slow cook recipes Derry was talking about is the roast shoulder of mutton, which, before it goes anywhere near the oven, has to spend as much time as possible marinating in blood. Not something you see every day. Oh, wow. Oh. I thought it would smell. It I, I like black pudding, but I'll tell you, how much is there? Three gallons of it. Yeah. <laughs> on, I'll this. Okay. Looks like red wine. Like red wine. If you're Bella Lugosi, maybe it looks like red wine. It really tastes like red wine now. No, I just read the recipe. Yeah. We don't really know why marinating meats in blood was a popular practice, but it very much was. Maybe it was an attempt to just use as much of the animal as possible, and certainly when animals were slaughtered on the premises, so to speak, there was plenty of blood available. Blood, blood, blood. At least it's not ours. <laughs> Likewise, we don't really know why the practice stopped, but stop it did. A good guess is that it was to do with the industrialization of meat production. With the processing happening elsewhere, blood wasn't readily available. This might well explain how a whole range of ingredients disappeared from use. Lips, heads, eyeballs, palates, to name a few. Okay, to roast a shoulder of mutton, so we've done the blood. Then you need suet, thyme, put it over a spit. <laughs> a spit, we're not going to do that. There's no spit, so you have to do that in the oven, okay? okay. It will take three hours roasting. And uh, we have to make venison sauce. It's a lot of work in that dish alone, isn't it? One of the few. We've got, got a full day ahead of us, really. It just dawns on me. We have the blood. It sounds like there'll be sweat. What odds on tears? There's a Babylonian proverb which goes something like, the gods do not deduct from man's allotted span the hours spent in fishing. But then the old Babylonians probably weren't talking about fishing in the middle of October on Loch Derevara, in the pissing rain. I think it's fair to deduct from the look on Paul's face that he has just come up with a new definition of the word misery. This is cold, this is wet, this, quite frankly, is torture. We're coming on to a nice spot now, Paul. I'll take your word for it. That's uh, one of the most, one of the best spots for that. All right, I'm pretending I'm not cold. You feel a bit of cold? <laughs> yeah, I am actually. Hey, I'm used to working in a toasty kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least Mick the Gilly is having a good time. What do you think of the George Foreman? I, well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind owning, you know, being George Foreman. It does, it's done well, isn't it? Oh, it's a super, it's yeah. a super thing for cooking. Yeah. Super. Yeah. I do the little Phyllis of person in three minutes. Best thing yeah. we ever got. I haven't got one now, but I, I know uh, exactly what you I recommend it. I remember seeing him on the late, late. Yeah? Years ago with Gay Byrne. Very nice man. Huh. Yeah. It's a sad fact that we Irish don't really value our freshwater fish the way we do their celebrated marine cousins. Trout aside, we tend to ignore the pike, bream, carp, perch, and all the other species in our lakes and rivers. And even trout are a pretty hard sell. And while the Irish hailing from the East European clans have a fondness for carp, there's a lot of fish out there being ignored. 
so we could be here for another hour or so. I'll be here for a little while, Anya. What hurry be on you? Huh? What hurry be on you? <laughs> no, no pressure. No pressure at all. Oh, my God. You have to keep looking for them, searching for them. They say there are two types of fishermen, those who fish for sport and those who fish for fish. They're tiny. And then there's Paul. They're a lovely little fish, Paul. These two have to feed eight people. Ah, no, we'll get a couple of big ones later on. Why'd you leave them go? Oh, we let him go. He's a bit small. He'll get bigger. I'm freezing. <laughs> you let him go? Yeah, yeah. I don't believe it. So, with a few perch in the bag, here's a different proverb to maybe sum things up. A Spanish one this time. Es imposible pescar con los pantalones secos. You can't catch a fish with dry britches. <laughs> I'm just hoping that when Derry Clark comes to gather for me that he encounters miserable weather and he doesn't suffer as much as I'm suffering. As much as Paul is enjoying his morning on Lake Derravara, he has to remember that he's not out here just to have fun. He's the gatherer. He needs to gather. He really mustn't forget that Derry is waiting back in the kitchen. Actually, why am I worrying? Derry will never let him forget. I need more food. <laughs> I have no food. Ah, the turkey. Ah, yes. One of the many dishes Derry needs to prepare for tonight's feast is a soused turkey like sturgeon, which calls for a whole turkey to be boiled in equal parts water and vinegar. Perfect. In effect, pickling or sousing the bird. A lot of food was pickled to help preserve it in the days before the deep freeze. And back in the day, our turkey would also have been boned and rolled, hence the reference to sturgeon in the title. But for aesthetic reasons as much as anything else, Derry has decided not to do this. Okay, that's for you. Two so, uh, uh, later. While they wait for Paul to arrive with his offerings, Derry and Laura get on with preparing the pigeon à la bresse. Wood pigeons wrapped in beet leaves, streaky bacon, and call, the fatty outer membrane of a calf's stomach. Another case of using as much of the animal as possible. This is weird, isn't it? That's one thing about these menus I noticed. Things haven't been used or back kind of using them now. Tonight's meal will be served à la Française, which means there are effectively two courses with several dishes in each course, all of which arrive on the table at the same time. One of my favorite dish in the whole menu is this. I love wood pigeons, they're my favorite. The wood pigeon will arrive as part of the second course, along with calf's foot mince pies, lamb bits, lemon pudding, and apple snow. The perch will be part of the first course, if Paul can give up on the fun part and get with the gathering program. I say when I get my bout of double pneumonia after today, and I clock off early, it'll be because of Derry Clark and his fish. Well, so at least we have something. We do. We have something here, look. Don't be shaking the boat, guys. <laughs> yeah, one for you, one for me. Yeah, we're There'll be a row over these two fish now. I still keep thinking we got to feed eight people with this, you know. I want to feed the people. But all is not lost. This little fellow makes at least three perch for the pot, which would be a worry if the fish dish was the main course item. But the perch is only one dish in a first course that includes white soup, that marinating shoulder of mutton, and the soused turkey. It's not quite a case of the loaves and fishes, all things considered. They're chem dirt cheap. What are they? Wheelbarrow wheel. <laughs> chem dirt cheap when the reception hits the building thread. It's like something for a fellow with piles. No, you have piles if you're sitting on that timber all day. Yeah, I might have to this. Be... 